I mean, if they were going to Dark Sieve, the Void Spirit looks very good with it. And but... the tower damage is just woeful. <laughs> you know, I think it has to be Natsumi's hero that's still yet to come remaining. in my eyes. Five seconds remaining. Hmm. All right, well, so, Jim... Are you feeling position five, Dawnbreaker? I don't know where how else they're going to fit this, because I think you don't... I like, you can lean a four, put the wing range in mid, but uh, that's that's not the person in question. I, I think it's more than likely. Luna. Luna, okay. Man, the Dark Seer looks even better now. Phantom Zelma. Oh, the Tau push is still pretty trash with PL. Mm hmm Or Quap. Interesting. Uh, Void Spirit's not going to have the greatest time mid, but they do not have a great way to really lock in the Void Spirit as the game goes on. He can make a lot of plays early. It will be Nico playing on the Spirit Breaker. So, so how do you like this flexibility they've gone for for Polaris and I guess Dream Maker the same as well? I'm preferring Dream Maker's draft. I feel like if they win the team fight and they do, like... Sure, against the Void Spirit, there's not a lot of amazing lockdown, but if they get the lockdown, even once, you know, <laughs> whoever they target onto is dead. You know, Primal Roar, follow into a Light Strike Array, into a, a Shackle, into a Starbreaker onto someone, you know, even just the Lucent Beam to be able to have that extra little mini stun. And if they win a team fight, these this is multiple objectives gone. You know, you've got a Beastmaster with that inner Beast Aura, you've got the Lunar Blessing from the Luna, already a really strong right-clicker, and then a Rosé as well on top of that. So I'm probably going to lean towards Dreammaker from this one. I'm a bit worried for Radiant with how they can deal with the Phantom Lancer. I think they... Wind Ranger, Beastmaster... To to that point. You don't think it's going to get to that point? Nope. How do you make plays on Dreammaker? to kind of prevent the Natsumi PL from farming? I honestly think you can just try and ignore Natsumi as much as possible and feel like you're going to take complete control of the map before he comes online. Just play around the Beastmaster. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you feel like Nevermind Lane's going to go well then, up against Silencer Phantom Lancer, and it's a Beast Wind Ranger, I believe? So is that a lane where he should have a lot of farm to work towards the Helm of the Overlord? I have to be really careful with the positioning on the silencer. So could be looking to opt into an early-ish point in the shackle shot, especially once the Beastmaster's level three and you've got those, uh, you know, you can have the stage where you've got two boars out, your slow doubles, the damage is increased significantly and silencer is uh, just going to be a dead man walking if he's in a bit of a rough spot. So I, I still like Dreammaker's Draft. you got the, the four ladies and Beastmaster, the Lumberjack. It does feel like, though, you can have ways to kill off the boar in the lane. Like, if yeah. you've got the, the Spirit Lance, the Arcane Curse as well. Uh, for anyone not aware, we are in a, a pause as well, hence why we, we haven't jumped in just yet for our, our last game. But it's... Dreammaker have been looking exceptional through... Except, actually, we go exceptional. That's I mean, they've still lost eight games, but the Open Qualify oh, team... Yeah, a... Yeah, perfect. Above expectations. They're, they're 6 and 8 at the moment. They're one placement above Polaris. So this is the 6th first 7th battle. And again, Polaris are growing in strength. They've only played 5 series at the moment compared to the 7 it looks like on Dreammaker. So still a lot more series left for, for the newly formed stack to see how much they're able to, uh, to pick up in, in regards to victories. Uh, I'm just enjoying the bants and uh, yeah, just confirming. We we've got some K-pop banter happening in in the in the old chat right now. Boomy asking Rose if he's talking about Rose from Blackpink, and then just shouting out his preferences for uh, which member of the band he prefers. That's the lady. Who's, who's your favorite member of Blackpink, Aries? That's what I want to know. Um, I'm a huge fan of. Moderna. No? Have you got your shot yet? 
Say that again. Have you got your shot yet? No, I haven't. I don't even know why that 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 came to to mind. <laughs> I was just I was just reaching. Didn't even think. Didn't even uh, know. You could have just taken one of the names that they'd already said in chat and just tried to play it off, but no, you just went out of left field entirely. No, what do you mean? Jenny's kind of cool. Uh huh. Jenny, you know she she's alright. You know the reddish hair tinge. I want to play you in poker at some point. She's got a case is horrible. I I like poker. I'm kind of decent in poker. It's enjoyable, right. but hang on, decent actually. Let's 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 revert back on the decent. I enjoy playing it, which means it gives me some. It means well, uh, I'll enjoy meeting you when we do end up playing. Maybe we need a poker picnic. That's what we need to arrange. A poker picnic. What what uh? What games are poker though? You you Texas Manila. Uh yeah, Texas Hold'em. It's pretty fun. Manila, I'm more of a fan of Luzon myself. Luzon? Manila is a city in the Philippines, and Luzon is an area in the Philippines. Okay. So. You, you're trolling me. You, you're pulling my leg. Okay. This is the C Dota cast. You know, you gotta throw in a little bit of fat stuff for the Pinoy fans. I threw in Manila. And Manila is also just like a type of folder, so, you know, it's not... It's nothing special. Well, it's... It's special enough for them, all right? They think it's special. They 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 appreciated me throwing it out there, and they just throw it back in my face. You're like, not good enough. Okay, fine. Wow. I'll take oh, your money in poker. First, now we're on to the the Filipino side. It's kind of fitting, you know. It's uh, Malaysia versus the Philippines with a bit of a Laotian flair in there. With Nevermind playing for uh, for Dream Maker. So we'll see who comes on top. A little bit of country pride coming through here, which. Of course, is very important. If you haven't seen it already, the 2022 Asian Games in Hangzhou is uh, going to have esports there as a medal sport, and Dota 2 is one of those sports there. So I'm keen to see, you know, what sort of teams we might look to form up in the next year or so. The battle begins. It'll be exciting to see who picks up the medal, and along in this game is also Boom. He's got Blink level one. So you can say Queen of Pain's impact through the first couple of waves is going to be very minimal. It's interesting that Dream Maker as well. Did you see the Clinks it was banned out second phase? I I, I don't remember. I just I remember. I saw it. Yeah, I don't think I saw it. So that's that's interesting because they've, whenever it's been available, they've just first picked it. I know the hero did get nerfed a, a decent amount, but we have seen it once since then, but not a lot. Wonder if there are some of the the future teams that might look to take advantage of that, you know, saying, hey, look at this game. It was available and they didn't end up picking it for themselves. It does seem like Chidori likes his ranged farm intensive heroes. You know, the gyro has come to mind. Now you you picked up the Lunar as well. Keep going, Boomy. I'm gonna get this fat ass owl. He wanted to make sure he got out of the, uh... Wait, are you looking at the couriers? Dude, look how stocky this man is. He's thick. Dota been... logos on the bottle? He's been bulky. Top tower Bro, he... attack. That's a dirty bulk right there. I don't know. That's the only kind of bulk I know about. <laughs> <laughs> dirty bulk is where it's at. Let's be real. We're too much of foodies. You, you can't, you can't take away food from me. You're gonna make me eat rice and chicken and broccoli for ten times a week. Pfft. Yeah, right. I don't want some like stringy, tasteless piece of flesh. No, give me some chippies any day. Oh, you're making me hungry. Mm -hmm. I need my Pico's getting gone on a little bit here on the bottom side. And remember, this is not a support spirit breaker. This is a core. So if they're able to get this kill, oh, oh, they just need to be of the vision for the beam. There we go. All right, let's get super delirious. Let's do it. I'm all in. Are you in? A what? Delirious hours. That's what. Sure. Why not? What do you mean? It's what? after midnight. Any kind of delirious hours is after midnight for us. You this is what, hour eight of the cast so far? Uh, yes. 
So that's that's good enough for me to sign the delirious. Put put the medal up, put the sign. Everyone, be aware. We heard Denog ripping into some, saying uh, a lich five man sinister gaze is better than sex, and then also saying. I mean that was that was early in. That wasn't in delirious. That yeah, wasn't. so I don't know. I'm worried about what's gonna happen now. You never know. I'm oh. a loose cannon, man. Oh no, Dawnbreakers. Should be able to be loose as well, down in the deck. Which one are you me getting some revenge here from that previous death before. Meanwhile, Mac and Rose, Rose Mac. battling it out. Is Mac gonna win it? Sidesteps the remnant. Who's got the right click? Rose. Thanks to the three fairy styles. He walked into. I wonder. Okay, is he gonna push this way out of this? Oh, two point stagger. Boomy's gonna go for it. This dude's got some big nuts. I feel like Rosé would have gone for the uh, the tower tonight if they, the fortify wasn't used there as well. Middle tower is under attack. Oh, at least he's got a good old bounty. Money to burn. Money. Be able to stack up the small camp and go to the water in on the top side. <laughs> Stacks. Lose. Okay, he was going for it. I thought he was just going to walk past. Did he get it off? He did. Uh, how's top lawn while we... We get the chance. Phantom Lancer CSing very well at the moment from Natsumi. Seven denies too. Meanwhile, Radiance never mind. Sitting a, a little bit behind the pack. He's having a better time than what his counterpart is down bottom. Once again, they, they're going on Boomy. Charge coming all the way back. It's one of the big benefits of having this Spirit Breaker. You're never really punished by making these extra dive, considering you can just TP back to base and be in the lane pretty soon afterwards. So that Walk of Shame, not quite as impactful. Although we do see he hasn't even reached up to his level 4 just yet. Boomy having the, the net worth lead there. And it's resulted in an early-ish Urn of Shadows as well. So if they're able to get more kills onto Trezam in particular, then they can look to convert that nice and easily. Yeah. What do you want to see from the Dawnbreaker 5? Is the Soul Ring an, an option here just to tank her up a little bit and at least provide the consistent spam of abilities? Uh, I would say so. Just something like that. Even Medallion's not bad Medallion's with the lineup tower. that you've got. You know, if you're able to not. get a single pick off as well. Uh, you can look to convert that really quickly into more objectives, like I keep on talking about, right? Like, you oh, I might even catch Boomy out here a little bit, using the, the charge from the Luminosity to stay somewhat healthy in the laning stage. But yeah, like, one pick-off means that you're in a really advantageous spot for a team fight, which means you can, you're in a good position to get more objectives. So I'm keen to see how they might look to do that. Still just the one point in the blink, so Boomy... He positioned himself well enough that he's going to get away, but he's been bullied out of this lane pretty heavily. Get the stack off. Maybe just on the hard camp. Yeah. And a, oh, a charge into mid lane. Rosé's got to be careful here. Yeah, they had ample time. That observe what's scouting out. So it'll enable CZY's TP, but it doesn't hold back Nico. See, extra tower attributes enough. Rosé is actually going to look to turn Laguna Blade combined up with the Dragon Slave and Maxagona. This they take away the regen for Rosé, but they're cutting off the retreat avenue as Trezam is going to look to show up as well. The shackle, but he's on the high ground. Nico, a bit more difficult to go through now. But it looks like it won't matter with the dragon slave from afar. It's already maxed out and we're going to scout it if there's any more stacks nearby. Just a, a double at the hard. Again, another solid performance in the mid lane from Rosé. You know, it's, it's up against someone of the caliber of Mac, and he's winning. Yeah, Rosé is Can't the... discount. The CZY rotation either, right? Like, uh, the shackle shot preventing the follow-up there. From Mac to be able to secure the kill on Rosé. And uh, he was left hanging as well. Was going for the high five, and even got the stack off. It was denied completely. You hate to see it, Bible Thumb. <laughs> It does feel like Mac can... Is there a lane that he can really gank, though? Like, it doesn't feel Gaia's like you're... Both your supports don't have stuns, which makes it very difficult. 
probably the bot side still, you know, the slows into the charge, maybe lucking out a little bit with a greater bash, and Luna not the tankiest of uh, position one heroes, so I feel like if you're able to get the kill onto Chidori, you'll go a long way just towards uh, securing the game for yourself. See how they're playing this lane at the moment. Chidori is having a free time. Simultaneously, the, the Phantom Lancer is, is getting a lot of farm up top as well, but will not be able to keep up in the farm with the Lunar at, at the early stage. Have to hope on it. An early Diffusal Blade timing to at least get involved. Rose is getting charged down, however. It's going to turn him. Pop the Quop straight on top of the dome. So that's some Keep backup coming, coming through. Enough. See what Trazam can do to hold the back as Rose gets some distance. Max actually going to opt to reset his positioning and well, they'll sacrifice the lack of the Nico. Keep in mind, this is the position three and well, meanwhile, that's a solar kill it looks like on Natsumi. And you got the turnaround kill, I suppose, on CML, but you're totally happy with that 2v1 and he still comes out on top. Oh, the tip too. the tip. Bottom See, if this was a pub, attack. that buyback would be used. <laughs> That's an early buyback. I you haven't played much C pubs lately, have you? <laughs> uh, oh, someone told me C never gives up, and I'm gonna mix. Oh, they don't. But early on, they uh, they take tips and things like that very personally. Money to burn. Not to me. put into one. Yeah, you've even got the. The Centaur Creep doesn't have the Stomp available for another couple seconds, so he'll be able to get back, but all it means is that uh, you are denying a lot of this farming gold away from the Phantom Lancer. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. It's just furthering the deficit that the PL is compared to the, the other cores on Dreammaker at the moment. And we haven't seen any of the potentials to make plays across the map from Polaris as well. Mac hasn't left this middle lane and Nico is very much struggling on the Spirit Breaker. They pretty much have three supports at the moment in this game. And Natsumi might be down once again. Raw is available. Beautiful chain lockdown. And they are just outplaying here as left, right, and center for Radiant. They can take these stacks away too. This is a lot of the catch-up potential, especially for Mac. I mean, he's about 1,300 gold behind. And all that CML can do is just sit there and watch as it happens. You know, never mind. He's a beast right now. Helm with the Dominator picked up early on. Already the Buckler. So that's going to enable these pushes Radiant even further as the charge looks to come in. Has to be careful to walk out quickly as he's going to force out a bit of an earlier attempt to take that stack Dyer's than they might have liked inadvertently on czy uh helping towards taking that with a power shot oh this is then forcing them out of the top lane which they don't have heroes that can defend very easily at all so with the catapult timing nevermind should be able to get this one for free and this will also give opportunity for Chidori to farm the Ancients while Dawnbreak is just soaking up some experience down bot. Yeah, all she needs in the support Dyer's role is experience, right? Is uh, again, opting to go into the phase Dyer's boots, just realizing that, you know, you are going to be kited around these team fights a little bit if you've just got brown boots or, or something like that. So, yeah, I don't hate it. It's against uh, a decent amount of right click as well coming through from the Phantom Lancer, Spirit Breaker. I... <laughs> feel like this movement should be pretty obvious. I mean, no one's farming mid. No one's showing bot. Um, is it why I don't... How do you even start, though? Oh, Nico is here. He's got level 6-2. Maybe this will give them an opportunity to get a kill. They can transition. <sighs> do you feel like Polaris with the... Void Spirit and Spirit Breaker, they can just get a couple pickoffs across the map to kind of offset the disadvantage they're at at the moment. I feel like they can get one now with uh, with CZY dropping down. I don't think there's too much that he can do to prevent his death. But beyond that, I don't 
feel like Dream Maker really care all that much. You know, you're pushing in this top tower on Nevermind, you're farming on Chidori, you've got mid lane farm on Rosé, and you're soaking up experience on Trezan. So I think it'd be a mistake to try and commit to save a support at this stage of the game. Normally. I mean, it's just with all they're getting out of the map, though, like Chidori's going into. He actually even went Mask of Madness with the Possessed Mask, so. Oh. Still. Sometimes we see that you don't have to opt really into the, the Life Steal item because of it. I feel like if you've got the space to farm, you may as well, right? It just it leaves you so sustainable that uh, you can look to take it. It's been a reasonably long DC from Nevermind. Hopefully it uh, is no bug DC. Hopefully he knows the correct console command to put in so that uh, we're not having another repeat situation. It's only 11 minutes in, but I would still say it's going to be pretty damn hard to remake anything like this. Yeah, that's a bit of unfortunate scenario we saw the, the other day. Hopefully we don't have another repeat and, and Daddy Gaben can, can fix that one out. I know there's been what some... What Gaben's doing right now? Um, that is a great question. I mean, he's probably sleep first and, and foremost if he's in New Zealand. He's not like us. He's not... Degen. Yeah, Degen hours. Oh, who knows? Maybe he's gaming. Maybe he's got his feet up, kicking back. On the Oz server. <laughs> Chilling. Playing some games. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Be able to get away here on Nevermind. So, avoiding the gank might end up giving up his Centaur Conqueror. Actually, not even doing that. So, Rose in the mid lane. He should still be fine, considering how heavily they needed, needed to commit on that rotation Dyer's to be able to kill the uh, the Wind Ranger. And at least they get the deny as well. There's another rotation in onto Rose. This time around, I think he should go down. Shot of range. They even laid down the global silence to prevent the plus one, but just with CZY showing up, they can't force the Lena into uh, her early death there. So still 3 0 and 2. And a bit of trouble movement speed. We see Rose is just so hard to, to close the distance on. Oh, this is quite the start for the boys on Radiant. I mean, he's just freely finding farm across the map on, on the Luna. Trezam's getting all he wants down bottom. <laughs> Even nearly killing Boomy as this position five. With the, uh, of course, the infused raindrops, meaning that he doesn't care about anything that uh, a support quap might be able to lay into him. Uh, uh, is this a solo kill? No. Be careful about the positioning again. Yeah, with next hammer. Doesn't have any. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, you gotta get out of there. Dyer's Another tower tonight, so denied. a little bit of extra gold not going the way of Dream Maker, but they're still very happy with how the early stages of this game have gone. Nico severely suffering 1600 gold behind on this Spirit Breaker relative to his counterpart in the Beastmaster. Natsumi is doing very well for farm, though. I I'm still a bit worried on how Dream Maker can deal with the Phantom Lancer as the game goes on, but he does not have any cause to pair with him right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you are just going to be relying on Spirit Breaker to maybe honestly just run at the Lena through the fight and, and sacrifice your life. The Wind Ranger could they're be another... Really... They're, they're, they're desperate to try and get Radiant's a pick off onto someone like the Luna right attack. now and actually walked back towards the mid lane and went underneath the smoke. It'll they have be, to be quick. never mind instead. Oh, Max used both his charges. So yes, they get the kill. Nico's gonna show up as well, but maybe he's just gonna feed another life away here as Rose will cut down the Void Spirit and Nico also will charge. not escape. Two for one, happy to take that. Does give Natsumi space to continue farming on the bottom side of the map, but I feel like if that happens again, and uh, not even having to use the Eclipse, let's remember on Chidori, means that they could look to transition this into Roche. Oh. Boomy really playing on the edge here with the Queen of Pain. Boom. Only he one point it. in. High risk, high reward. That's the Boomy way.
still is giving Natsumi a lot of space here. He's top of the net worth. So they're finding time for the Phantom Lancer, which is all they need. Like, is there... You really... You believe that Radiant don't care about the status quo? Like, at shutting down the Phantom Lancer, they're happy with just out farming and, and looking to hit a timing pretty shortly? Yeah, I think they're totally fine with this. You know, Luna's going to farm just as much. Blessings Lena's doing a good job of pushing warrior. lanes, so your towers aren't really in too much danger. And now you've even got this Siege Creep wave to play around, so... With the Vlads coming out to Nevermind now, you've got the Primal Roar available. I think they could look to try and group up and make a bit of an attempt to kill someone. Even an Aetherlands now freshly picked up from CZY. Boomy. Oh, this time they get the catch. So Chidori is not messing around. They know how difficult of a kill Boomy's been so far, so they'll... Pop out the Eclipse, just get a freebie, plus 245 gold for the position one. Giving him the, the top of the table at the moment. Of course, it's fluctuating back and forth. With how much farm that zoom is getting. And Marcus? Even this Dawnbreaker, pause five, going into an Echo Saber. So being wow. a, a serious threat in his own right. Die are scanning. I mean, we'll see if it's going to pay off here. With, with how much farm he's getting is... He's going to be pretty happy about that for our CML. It's a rough life against Selena, especially with how farm she is. You see how much damage she can just do in a, in a heartbeat. Might kill off Trazam, though. So me finally going to look to show up to a fight with the Diffuser Blade. And so give him a bounty in gold. So still funneling a lot to the Phantom Lancer. Thinking about charging CZY, but... That one is a little bit too ambitious. They haven't smoke though, so maybe trying to connect to top, but no one's there in the area. Shidori's already back to the Ancients. Yeah, his movements have been fantastic. He's actually who I've been watching for the past minute or so. So Shidori's just been playing super aggressively, realizing that, you know, we're also going to have Dawnbreaker farming in you know, aggressive positions. He's, so he took away the jungle camps, looked to push, uh, I believe, the creep wave into a tower, which had two of his own set of uh, creeps. So it's a lot of experience and gold going away from Polaris. Uh, Nevermind continued to farm, so now he's got his Helm of the Overlord at 17 minutes, plus Primal Raw level 2 available. So, uh, yeah, they're in a really good spot right now on Dream Maker. Might just look to wait for the level 15 on the Luna, as well as Eclipse to come up, and then they can look to make... Uh, maybe not an all-in attempt, but it's a very easy way to try and take some I'm towers. Back. It's in trouble here, CZY. Found the connection with the Shackles. Is Mac getting any opportunity to rem them away? He's not. Now, Boom is the next on the agenda. The long cooldown in the blink. So, Dreammaker continuing to grow their lead. It's up to 7,000. Chidori now with the, the Sanjin Yasha. This should be a tier 2 tower claim. They might again wait for Nevermind to find a target with the Helm of the Overlord. What's he got? I mean, the Ancient Thunderhide's pretty good. Uh, the attack speed would be great for the Lena or the, uh, or the Luna. Either or. Even just for Thunderhide itself, right? Wait, Natsumi? Is he trying to 4v1 right now? Of course, Global giving some assistance. Sneaker's gonna charge on forward as well. They'll obliterate the Lena without any assistance, but it's gonna cost Natsumi his life along with Nico as they overstay their welcome. A heavy commitment as they lose the win condition. The first death in Trying quite some time is Trazam. It doesn't make it over the edge. Actually, we're going to go back in. It's never mind. Trying to backstab here. Once you the silence are just cut down from afar, the power shot to claim. I think that was one of the changes in the more recent patch. So maybe uh, Trazam hasn't played too much Dawnbreaker recently in that the uh, the Starbreaker now doesn't like Radiant's traverse terrain. It can't get through attack. ice shards and things like that or, or off cliffs. So it's not actually listed in the tooltip as one of the updates, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that kind of update recently. Slowing down. Now the Luna's been able to throw that net worth lead a, a little bit further. It might also kill out Boomy. Oh. Uh, I mean, this is very disheartening, honestly, for Polaris. You're really all off the back of an Aghanim's timing. 
on on Mac and Natsumi maybe hitting hard around the same stage, but Dreammaker can take Roshan, I feel like, in the next minute or so. Yeah, maybe just looking to wait for the BKB on Luna. She'll have level 18 by that stage as well. They'll get the pick off onto Trezan, but again, it's just your support and you can buy back at any time. I feel like, well, I actually ended up buying the Rope of the Magi, so he's not going to be able to. CZY going to be able to get the win run off in time. Yes, he will. Ooh. Is he being away? No. Natsumi picking up a double here, getting closer towards the heart. I'll give them some opportunities to now take back over their top side of the map here. Maybe you know, dewarding the area as well. But their lanes are always in an unfavorable position for them to make any aggressive plays on, on Radiant's territory. It's Shidori still just continuing to reign supreme in the net worth. 800 gold away from that Echo Saber as well on the Dawnbreaker. Have to be careful about this kind of uh, smoke maneuver. Dawnbreaker back up online, level 2 ultimate as well. So plenty of healing pumping out at this earlier stage of the game. Rosé is a big kill to find. Can they chain lock perfectly before the yours even comes out, Nico? Now the strike's on cooldown. So they won't have this opportunity, but Rosé... It's got some assistance flying out. The heal, not enough. And now Trezam committed to the defense. And that's also going to give up his own life. So a little bit of gold funneled into Polaris. Are they going to give the kill over to? Will be Natsumi. I feel like that was a little bit delayed. You know, he was in position to want to do it. I thought he, I guess he thought he might have been able to connect through just by running. But yeah, a little bit late on that solar guardian. Not getting full impact out of it. And well. Ends up costing him two kills. It's still a 7k net worth lead. Continuing to farm on Chidori as this top lane starts to push in a little bit. But Mac, is, uh, he's been farming up as well. So only 400 or so gold away from picking up his Aghanim Scepter. That's going to be the key timing that Polaris are going to be looking to play around. Reaver on the PL. So much tankier at these next couple of team fights. I mean, they're, they're gonna try and wait. Oh man, that KO Force pushback. Luna's in trouble though, pre BKB. Global Science doesn't offer them much of an offensive potential. In fact, just giving Polaris an opportunity to reset their positioning. The CML, however, will be caught out before the stairs. Mm. They've got nothing left to fight right now. Sonic Wave used uh, the Global Silence as well. He didn't really use all that much of anything. You know, the, the Lugina Blade, sure, probably wasn't necessary to be able to pick up that kill. Still pretty damn is deadly. Are they actually looking to make a play onto Chidori here? I think just trying to play a bit of the distraction game, and it's not going to work. Chidori just Dyer's continues to push on forward with the Ancient Thunderhide, and that should be a tier 2 tower claim. They can this they is the Ag to reveal. Trezam's going to try and create some chaos in the back line. They're looking to target down Chidori, but they're going to be careful of Mac. The dive bomb forward now with the raw fob. They're holding back Chidori, so the damage, it's not lacking, though. As they're able to follow up and burst through the Void Spirit, but it's now the Natsumi show for Polaris. They need him to come in huge for the team fight, but they've got big issues with that Gale Force locking the retreat right on the outskirts of the T2 Tower. Great use of the Aghanim Shard there we're seeing coming into play here from CZY. Dyer's top tower has been denied. And if that shackle landed onto Booby as he was standing in the trees, that's tilt material right there. But not quite able to do it. CZY nearly landing the shackle there onto the real PL as well as Natsumi continues to try and farm up. He's nearly level 20, he's got his heart. But I don't think until he's got that, uh, that Aghanim Shard completed will he be able to play around this Roche pit, which, you know, they've got control of the outpost now. You've got the BKB in level 20 available on the Luna, even looking to skill up into a little bit of extra Lucy beam damage. <laughs> Dude, are you watching Top at all? Nah, Shane Bash? Is that what happened? Oh, man. So CZY tried to solo kill Boomy and mm -hmm. almost did so. Boomy just got some assistance from the Spirit Break at the last second. Then he blinked away, was like... 20 damage off from being sniped from power shot and then he attempted a win run tp out and it just didn't cover the full tp duration and nico won you know first he bashed him oh of course so uh yeah very 17%. very cool smoke up as well trezam and chidori they're the only ones here it's a ballsy maneuver to be making 
don't kill with the courage, you want to kill, no they want CML. Oh. Oh. And they will get neither. It's keen. I feel like if you've got Rosé there as well, then that's almost a guaranteed kill with the uh, the additional information that you're going to be able to provide with that Fey grenade that they're already launching out onto people. And with that Shadow Blade, you can be acting as much more of that surprise factor. Smoke up, Max. Who can he find? Looks like going to go for Trajam instead of Chidori. They didn't have the vision of the, the Luna retreating. They could almost seeing him as well. But it feels like Polaris have given themselves a... A window back into this as the items are still continuing to come through, especially Natsumi, who heart along with the Aghanim Shard. Yeah, Boom is going to his own scepter. CML force for his positioning. And and Spirit Breaker as well is pretty close to Aghanim's. Also getting an Aghanim's uh, oh, built up here for never mind. They found Rosé, though. That's a big kill to find here. Gale Force can it reposition the Makan. Now Chidori's going to look to turn with the BKP popped as well, but the Eclipse just eating up on all of the illusions. So they're more than happy to take through the damage. That's even Rose's a buyback on Alina. So that's a huge commitment. On top of the back line here, they'll still end up foiling. As Beastmaster. For the one to claim, Rose scurries on the high ground, but Polaris all of a sudden back into this game. That was a 7k net worth lead that shrunk to two just in the space of three core kills plus a buyback. And while I was talking about the strength of being able to take that Roshan, the fact that they didn't, even with all of the, the strong abilities that they had, the great farm that they had, and the fact that for a period, you know, you didn't have Global Silence, you didn't have Sonic Wave, and they still just wanted to farm more and more, might end up costing them. I wonder if they... Yeah, I don't know what the item's difference would have been for Trazam if he didn't go Echo, but... I mean, still Solar Crest or S Force or some utility item, probably nice for the cause. Even just the BKB, to be honest, not even for the cause, just to enable yourself to be right in there in the middle of the team fight, use the Starbreaker. Right now, like, do they have any BKBs on uh, Polaris? I don't think they do. So, right, if you're just constantly launching out those Starbreakers <sighs> off cooldown, I feel like you're doing your job pretty well. Yeah, it's very far forward on Rosé, though, considering he just pulled back. CML. Are there any reinforcements coming over? Uh, Dyer are happy to give up the silencer there. But Radiant, like, they need to start getting objectives out of these killers. They've had top claim for a while, but really haven't thought about Roche until now. Yeah, and I think with that dieback being expended, that's really the main thing that they're focusing on. Shidori looking to join in as well. They should be able to secure this without too much issue. Well, Aegis in the hands of Rosé. Chidori as well also went for the Aghanim Shard, so I believe that did get changed a little oh, that. Just off the line there with CZY. Have to be careful here. You know, it is an Aegis that you've got, but Max still in the region able to dish out a ton of damage. Will of course be increased when he reaches that level 20. Arcane power. He's just going to defend for now. I believe they're trying to set up on Chidori top. Nico's ready with the backstab. They also boots are traveled in Mac. And Chidori does have BKB. They might be happy with Force. He can't TP out as well because of the Nether Strike. He's going to be able to get there just in the nick of time for the Solar Guardian. Now Trazam will off the defensive factor as Nico end up costing himself. They've run into the Void Spirit too. Oh, beautiful timing from Rosé. Fought up the Shackle shot. There was no opportunity for the Yules and Mac is also going to go down. Nice little pick off there. Is that the, uh, that's not the full Ag Scepter coming out for the Beastmaster, is it? I think he's going BKB. He went he, okay. I can kind of understand it, but with that uh, couple of kills going your way, I feel like you could be feeling somewhat confident to continue the push on forward. Although, sure, he's going to need to be a little bit cautious considering he's going up against Natsumi, who's a full level ahead, getting closer to that level 25. We all know how strong that can be. Trazam? Oh, the first hit bash. They brought CML2. If they can take him out of the fight for the global, he can always buy back if it continues to break out. But Natsumi, man, they are, they've got big, big PL issues. They're looking for more too. CZY is under vision. This time, Nico will get the nether strike off. And 
Boomy's happy to drop the Sonic Wave considering he just freshly completed the Argonauts. Damn, that's a farmed quap. Yeah, level 18 too, so already maxed out in the in the I ultimate. Up onto Nico. I don't know if you got the damage for this, Rose. Uh, machine guns. Not oh, quite. Imagine Still you have lacking the that little bit extra. I mean, that's the difference. Uh, going into the BKB next, obviously, there's been a couple of times where, you know, you've been focused down by some chain stuns, so it's important to have that, but I feel like the big timing for Rosé in particular is having the Silver Edge on top of that BKB, being able to be that serious right-click threat. And speaking of that, Chidori looks like he's uh, looking to go into a Daedalus here on this Luna. Don't hate it. Butterfly, I mean, it, it feels pretty damn good as well. And speaking of that, PL reaches level 25 with his own butterfly, Radiant's only uh, 500 or so attack. gold away from being picked up. Radiant structures are fortified. <sighs> How much use can they get out of this DD rune? That's the real question here. Oh, they land it! Aether might be enough to protect Boomy. In fact, oh, just cancels the blink. So has yours, he's back to safety. They're still committing on forward. Boomy actually won't get away as Dream Maker continuing to pursue on forward, making sure they just close out the map as best as possible. They've got the That'd ages. Initiation from CZY there, making sure he catches on to him, not once but twice. They've also got the Beastmaster Hawk that's going to be able to use to uh, to set up for a lot of these skills. So the Sentry Ward positioning is going to be even more important than ever for Polaris. I'm going to look to go in. Oh man, what an AOE silence. First life dealt with instantly. Natsumi's now going to look to deal with the backline as well. We'll see how much chaos he can find. Drag very far in the river to clean off CZY, but there's no contestion. And now Polaris, they can go back in as well with a buyback coming into the fray. They'll try and target down the secondary support. They need to dodge Chidori with the Eclipse, but CML won't have the capability to do so. It's actually a pretty big deal taking out the Silence. It doesn't have buyback. And, uh, you know, even if Trezam now was to get picked off, he'll be able to have that buyback potential into the, uh, the Solar Guardian to quickly rejoin the team. So no Global Silence available. It's going to be very good for him. Tango has been on the ground for the longest time as well. <laughs> They're going back in. Nico, let's see if Still he's got the damage. They've actually stunned up Natsumi first. Raw fall up as well. Do they have the damage to go through him? Sonic Wave. Push back Nico. What a protection now with the back line. Look at all the space they're creating. Natsumi's actually going to look to go on forward, but Rose gets the LSA. It's not enough. Chidori's still going to continue to stand his ground, but the BKB about to expire. Now it's just a Void Spirit and Queen of Pain, but the damage is plentiful. As Matt can combine that up with the Arcane Rune, and we saw what Nico was doing, just halting back any extra damage from the backline supports, which potentially could have turned that one around. Potentially, it was a little bit of a preemptive use of the uh, the Soul Guardian as well coming through there from Trezam. He, he used it, but immediately got bashed and interrupted it. So if he went down, bought back and looked to rejoin and help out his uh, his cause that were in the center of the team fight, I feel like that's a very different story. And the charge is just going to continue. You can see Boomy here. He's got Ooh. the Sonic Wave ready. Thank you. Cool. Um, it feels like die can make too much chaos in fights. Like, I think Radiant very need a very easy just... Radiant's let's chain lock one hero down. Attack. Let's let the Lena machine gun from afar. And I don't think they're going to get these fights. Yeah, I th Radiant's Silencer is still is priority attack. number one if you're yeah. Dream Maker. And then after that, probably the Void Spirit if you can find a way to lock in onto him. But... It's going to need Radiant's some great plays from uh, CZY to continue, for sure. Boomy. Oh, Again, the target. Nico's going to reveal his position. The Global Silence too late, however. So Dram gets the land down. They also cancel the TP on Mac. Nico just has to hope the charge away is enough. So has Shadow Blade to utilize, but they already have the detection the out. The Gale Force again is CZY. Showing a bit of a reason why this Aghanim shot, it's got some utility to it. Radiant's bottom tower mm -hmm. Even getting up into the level 20 now, so the extra shackle shot duration constantly coming through. 
4.6 seconds. That's nuts. Oh, he's even going Octarina, looks like, from CZY. Yep. He wants that high uptime. So that'll make Gale Force a 30 second cooldown. Win run lasting for 6 seconds with a 9 second cooldown. Seems balanced. Seems good. It's. I'm back again to see why is playing exceptional. Do I need a collapse to protect Mac? They won't be able to do so. All right, these boars are crazy. Oh, sorry, the the hawks are giving him so much advantage right now. Again, vision to set up for CZY. Hmm. They're looking to maybe go for more. I mean, I feel very confident of just trying to push into the uh, the mid lane, bait out if there's any kind of buyback available for the Void Spirit. There's not right now, but he's only 28 gold away, so wouldn't want to get baited here. Instead, they're just going to go take the safe route. Glyph nearly back up anyway, so may as well just try and take this tier 1 tower with the use of the, uh, the Helm of the Overlord creep. Man, I wish I said it earlier. I was just gonna say, I want Dai to pick up a gem. Only I will know. There's doubters in chat. Is even, this purely even, because of the Hawk? Yeah, I, I think you need your own vision. Like, Ray, look how they're controlling the map towards top. Radiant have had a... Their vision game for the entirety of, of this has been exceptional. Is again, another pick off. It's on to Boomy this time. They do reveal heroes away from bottom, so instantly Radiant gonna... Let's replace themselves. To, to put themselves in a couple of here, I, I, I Rose. Mean, I'll say that. Rose got the BKB. Beam's going to give him an ample opportunity to get off, but it's not going to matter. The damage is stacked up. The BKB will do nothing but lower the duration. Got really hungry for that couple of right, extra right clicks to take out the tier 2 tower. I think they just need to completely disengage. You know, you don't want to be taking a. A fight unless again it's going to be on the back of czy if he says he feels you can go i would trust it because the man's having a game of his life yeah no the rush yet 30 seconds the gem is just because radiant have had the, also the hawk as well so now you don't have to mm. buy as many sentries and we've seen that like cml has been caught out way too many times even mac as well I and mean, max got seven deaths so you just need to you need to stop this jump potential and protect your, your key components of the lineup. All right, so I feel like we're beyond the point now of Radiant's net worth mattering a super amount. Attack. So let's have a look at the buyback just on the Beastmaster and the Dawnbreaker right now. And uh, well, that Roshan that's just about to respawn now is Radiant's definitely going to help with that. Let's see if Mac attack. realized. It looks like the, the pings have been coming Radiant's out, so they know. As well as taking away that scan. tier two tower prevents the uh, the assistance from coming through from buybacks on the Radiant Radiant's side from rejoining. It's a big deal. It feels like this next Roche fight with net worth being dead even is going to decide the game, but they've been able to stall things out enough with their pushback that Rosé should be able to respawn and join this if they're Radiant's quick enough on remake. Oh. Are they just... Just giving anxiety. Scan connects. They have to get to Roche on Dial. You need everyone here for this. The Hawk's coming. They got very good vision in the area. Max nice, doesn't have any resonant pulse, pulse charges too. For this fight that's about to break out, Natsumi needs to clear up some slots. In fact, he's just going to look to jump on forward. He clips it out. They've been able to get the initial stun on Natsumi, but what a sonic wave to drive back now with the laying down the global science for the ages. It's on the ground. Nico's going to be able to snatch it up. And now they're turning to deal with Tadori with the managers being burned. The health is gone as well. Natsumi, the raid boss throughout the team fight, but they haven't got on top of Rose just yet. Delina resetting a position, but Natsumi's hunting. No opportunity for the escape. The abyssal blades out. Three fallen on Dream Maker. They're going to look to make it a fourth as well. CZY, never mind sticking around the vicinity. Maybe Gale Force will give them the time. CZY will make it. But never mind. No sorry. You're going to be forced to hold your ground. And the inevitable will occur. As Polaris, what a successful team fight by the Roche Pit. They were even able to get the Shackle in onto the PL at the very start of that team fight. So great way to start things out with, uh, you know, the vision coming through. Trezam throwing himself onto the front lines, but unfortunately not enough. He, he got the Ag Shard, though, on the, uh, the door break. Okay. Yeah. 
tackle, not hitting onto the real PL. Radiant's top tower has fallen. What do you even give Radiant's that over to at this stage? The shot? Just keep it? Yeah. Um. It's just him or Radiant's Lena. But yeah. I feel like Lena's isn't that attack. great. Radiant's top barracks has fallen. Although. Laguna Blade against Illusion Heroes with Axe yeah. Shot. Look, I don't know. I, I don't have a read of Lena's Laguna Blade. Uh, so the yeah, the Axe Shot. Against Illusions, I feel like... I don't know Radiance if it hits or not, Middle to be honest. Like, I'm not sure attack. if it just prioritizes heroes or if it's all units. But if it hits Illusions, that's pretty effective against a PL. It's like, how Radiance long's the Middle line? Uh, we'll hold that thought. They've... They need a mount of defense here, Polaris. Another shackle, setting up for the beam. They're actually going to jump in. Maybe they're baiting. Boom is. Rose's in trouble. A BKB is able to reset his positioning. Chidori looking to man fight. CML the target. They'll bring down both the supports, but they're going to be cautious of their own positioning now. It's Dreammaker. Five heroes alive. They can stand the ground, protect the racks. Natsumi. It's actually Illusion. He's, oh, he's already out. He's like, hang on a second. What the hell? You can see the real one. Ooh. Another charge in. And. That's a cancel and a half. Yeah. Okay, so the Lena shot. Did he. Okay, never mind. Thornbreaker winner. Anyway, I'm intrigued regardless. How narrow of a line is that? Do you know? It's pretty narrow. Okay. I don't know how they get to a stage where they kill PO. I'm pretty sure Dai now itemized to keep Natsumi alive whenever he gets caught. And as long as they do that, he should just win every fight single-handedly for them. I mean, he's even just gone into the Trickster Cloak, realizing that, you know what? It's yeah, not at the dope. stage of the game where I need a hood or anything like that. I'm just going to get the Evasion and Magic Resistance component through from that. And then, of course, as a last-ditch last, just last ditch effort, just being able to have that, uh, that Invis available as well. So much more value to be able to pick this one up now relative to the Paladin Sword. And he's just going more and more into that survivability. He's got plenty of damage, especially with that uh, Abyssal Blade being picked up. Now, we did see how slow the push was for Radiant, so the leveler with the backpack is going to make it easier with Polaris if they win another team fight. But you were highlighting earlier that Dream Maker, they can push at such a stupid rate. They win one fight, this game's over. They're just going to, they're going to GG it down. So Polaris yeah. cannot make the mistake of not having buybacks. And luckily enough, they've got... Almost everyone, yeah. yeah. So, but that cannot change. Because if you... If you just make that little mistake and feel like, okay, maybe we can get this item farm and then I'll have buyback. No, you, you can't do that versus lineup. They, they win one fight. This game's over. Mm -hmm. Beastmaster nearly, nearly level 25. So he's going to have that lower cool, uh, sorry, the lower duration on, uh, sorry, cooldown duration on the Brimal Roar. It's going to be very effective, but it, it does still feel like Dream Maker, yes, if they're able to kill people, they might be able to force buybacks. But if that's the case, you got to get out of there because they're so committal yeah. on their first little area of team fight, right? Like uh, a Primal Roar, eventually it's going to have a lower cooldown. Uh, the Laguna Blade, again, it's still quite a long cooldown, 41 seconds, and then the Eclipse as well. So it feels like, you know, if you're able to expend a, a one round of buybacks, great, but you got to get back, reset, and then look to go again with all of the tools in your arsenal. And you just compare that to Polaris. Like, what does a PL need? Nothing. He needs to wait for his Abyssal Blade cooldown. That's about it. Do these fights get any easier for Radiant? Because they have been struggling versus Polaris as of late. Radiant's bottom tower. I wonder if that attack. active shard on Dawnbreaker will help a little bit. Just being able to feel confident to use his uh, his key team fight disruption Radiant's right in the middle it's very rare that the door break is going to be the target of like the the abyssal blade right so at least you can control up a lot of the pl illusions and prevent some of the damage coming in onto the likes of the leaner or the luna blessings upon a loyal warrior oh, see never mind it, it did complete up the the ice too how long does he have this That's one it. for uh, uh, he's had it for a little while, like maybe seven minutes. Rosé has gone for the Daedalus though, not wanting for the Silver Edge. Radiant's mm. bottom tower is under attack. Not sure how crazy I am about They're that. They're on Tapumi. 
They're not connected right now on Polaris. They don't want to use the Global Science too early on. They'll be forced to do so. Natsumi's trying to stack up the illusion of the backline. They've locked on Chitadora, who's in trouble. Can he rely on the Satanics to be able they to last so long? But they haven't been able to find the Phantom Lancer just yet. A doppelganger out. They've doubled the illusions. Now they can lock onto it. But another shackle from CZY. But Natsumi's too tanky. You can't kill the Phantom Lancer. He's the one that's a raid boss right now. He's got the assistance in Nico as well. A Sonic Wave laid down for the northern side of the fight to be the cleanup crew. As the buybacks are lacking, the heroes are lacking. And the game looks like she's done and dusted as Polaris will take it 43 minutes in. It feels so bad for CCY, right? Because he did so much just multiple times, able to land that full duration shackle onto the PL. He also got the focus fire on the real one, so they constantly had understanding of which one to focus down, but it's just not enough. Natsumi, the raid boss, able to pull this one out for his team. I have to ask as well, like I know we've, we've been memeing a little bit the backgrounds here and there, you know, we've had a, a lot of days with the group stages, but what's going on, man? Like, is that background actually, is this five out of five games you've had it for Polaris that they won with? I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty promising one. And it feels like this is the sort of thing where it's like teleports behind you with doppelganger and you're already dead, you know? It feels like that's how Natsumi was playing it all throughout that game. And unfortunately for Dreammaker, with that early advantage that they had, it was you know, approaching, what, a 75% win probability for them. They just kept wanting to farm for that little bit longer, and it ended up costing them quite severely. See, it that can be games where PL can rise to fame, There can be games where he falls flat, but this one for Natsumi was well and truly the one where he reigned supreme. 15-4 and 4 Tim, a game where they... They didn't have the answer to the Phantom Lancer. It was showing early on when you make a couple of mistakes and, and give Polaris an opportunity to make it to the late game. Well, they will, uh, they will punish you. And that they did here with the game one performance. Beautiful way to be able to come back into this and take it 43 minutes in. And now we're up to our last game of the night. We'll send it to a break. And when we come back, we'll have more of Dream Maker up against Polaris.